Carlos, if I can come to you first, um, why would a business consider a software one managed service? When you're moving to AWS particularly, there's two, uh, two major driving reasons that people come to us for a managed service. The first is they want to diminish their adoption curve. So moving to AWS is a completely brand new thing for most organizations and the people they have in the organization aren't up to speed necessarily with how to manage that infrastructure. So they came, they come to us to, uh, to mitigate that challenge and to allow their team to scale up at a different pace to the pace that they migrate onto AWS. The second uh, theme follows on from that in that because AWS is a completely different um, phenomenon, if you like, in terms of how you manage infrastructure, people are looking for it to move to the next level in terms of uh, how they manage the infrastructure. So it becomes much more proactive rather than the way people tend to manage their services at the moment is much more of a case of uh, something breaks, uh, let's find out what broke, let's fix it. Rob, to bring you in here, you know, that's maybe why, but uh, in terms of our uh, managed service, what, what are the typical areas that, that we would cover as part of that subscription? We provide that initial level one response, and that response is 24-7 and is uh, a, a global response. Um, part of that is monitoring, observability, and the context has changed. I think to, to reinforce what Carlos has said, we have moved that application from um, a known uh, environment actually behind kind of corporate locked doors into a much more open world. And that has a, a, a requirement for greater levels of security and related to that, therefore, uh, monitoring and observability. You, the move to a hyperscaler, any hyperscaler, requires that you actually manage the environment better than you've ever managed it before. You, you move to the cloud to allow your business to actually collaborate with all of your suppliers, uh, customers in, in a different way and in a much more flexible manner. And therefore, you've got more things to go wrong. You've got more opportunities, more interfaces, etc., more things to actually look at. Um, and yeah, being you therefore got to be more proactive in terms of maintaining that environment and actually maintaining that environment is more complex because of all of those interfaces and opportunities. So what are some of the things that we are doing for them that just sort of takes that pain or stone in their shoe away that allows cool. them to concentrate on that? Everyone's on a journey with their application set, regardless of whether it's SAP or non-SAP. Um, but if we take some of our SAP customers, they're on that journey, whether it's uh, to S4 or to other SAP components, and they want to focus on that value creation for their organization. And so actually you need a trusted partner to make sure that you, you're doing tomorrow what you were doing today. And actually, ideally, you're doing it a little bit better, um, that the environment is actually better maintained, um, that security has been enhanced. And that, that 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 kind of incremental continuous improvement is, is something that a, an effective managed service actually delivers. But and you've got that challenge as, as Carlos referenced at the beginning of and it's a different skill set and your team yeah, aren't yeah. there with the skills today. So you can either focus on developing the skills to manage the environment in this new context or you can focus on creating new value. But doing both at the same time is pretty difficult. Our sort of final two questions from me would be what to look for in in an MSP and following on from that you know what do you guys believe makes our software one uh, managed service and unique? Sure so I think uh, there's a couple of things uh, I think that you need to look for in this new world. Um, uh, one of the things is that you need to look for uh, a company that uh, gives you a managed service and the way that they charge for that managed service uh, is very similar to the way that cloud works in terms of consumption. So it's it's on, on demand, it scales up and down, yeah. uh, and that's the way that we price our managed services based on the consumption 
that the customer has. If you don't have it that way, it leads to poor architectural decisions because people are taking into account the fact that, oh, if they create another uh, EKS cluster over here, it's going to cost them another, uh, you know, 10K a month or whatever. And another thing is that ability to have a managed service provider that really uh, does everything in the cloud the way it's meant to be. So through infrastructure as code, uh, using cost optimization, making sure that security is security that's fit for the cloud. So everything is is cloud focused. It's not a managed service provider who's used to doing other things and suddenly they've moved into the cloud world, but they're still doing things in the old fashioned way. Related to that is, you know, we, do, we don't look at our uh, efficiency in terms of, you know, can we find the cheapest resources in the world, the cheapest people to do this? We actually look at how do we change the work that actually is necessary and to provide that managed service and central to that is automation. You know, so if we can actually transform the work, we can transform the cost and improve the quality. And it isn't just about finding cheaper people. It's about finding the best outcome over time. Ask that question of, of your managed service provider. If anybody watching this finds us of interest, like to find out more, then please get in touch. Thank you. Great, thanks Ian. Thanks Ian.